This is episode 120 of the Steady Trade Podcast with your host, Tim Bowen. I only got this TRT because you were talking about my feminine side. Steven Johnson. Maybe you need to work on your mental game more than your... Uh... And the Wall Street coach, Kim Ann Curtin. Welcome to the club like you're just a human being. Today we introduce a new feature on the podcast, the Steady Trade Book Club. Each month, we will read a different book, and then we'll talk about it on the podcast, and we invite you listeners to read along with us. Today, you'll get an overview of the first six books we will be covering over the next six months. It's another great episode of Steady Trade, right, Stephen? Welcome back to the Steady Trade podcast, special edition, new series coming now. It's me, Tim Bowen, Kim and Curtin. We're reviewing, we've started a book club where we're reviewing books from November to April, But what you'll actually get out of this episode is an introduction to the books that we're looking at and some conversation about the inner voice, which is one of the books that we're talking about, what you should be thinking before you place a specific trade, how you get in the right mindset. And Kim, what the hell else? We're going to be talking about books, some that are very technical, some that are about the emotional side of trading. And we've even picked a book that Stephen has picked by default because Tim held a gun to his head called The Fountainhead. And that's just the emotional uh, experience of one of those characters who's not a traitor. But Tim and I agree that it's a book that shows you how you have to stay stoic and calm in the midst of the storm that trading can be sometimes. So, so listen to this podcast or I will find you and I'm coming for you. <laughs> Hey everyone, Tim Bowen here. Really appreciate you listening to the Steady Trade Podcast. I have a great time doing it, really giving back, and and it's a true passion project of mine. But if you really want to get into the nitty gritty of trading, in Stocks to Trade Pro, it's a mentorship program that I do twice daily webinars every single day of the week. Never miss a day, market open, market close. I think it is the best way to really speed up that learning curve. And the best thing about it, and this is something that I'm truly, truly proud about, is we built an amazing community in Stocks to Trade Pro. We have a chat room, traders in there all day long, new, intermediate, advanced, young, old. It is an amazing community, and I think by working in these twice daily webinars, with the chat room, with the community, with Stocks to Trade, it is one of the best ways to become that consistently profitable trader. As I mentioned in the introduction, we're starting the steady trade. I always, I, back to the paper trading competition, I always botch the titles, but we're Isn't starting the steady trade book club, which is something that is dear to my heart. I'm, I'm a very avid reader and you know, it's kind of one of those things. I, I'm excited by this idea. The team came, you know, the team at steady trade kind of came up with this idea and um, I think it's neat because we're using the beauty of technology. I've actually, uh, I've, I've joined a couple book clubs. Many of you know I'm located in rural Michigan. And uh, listen, no offense, no offense, but uh, the two book clubs I in were, was in was like a 75 plus year old female demographic. Um, nothing against the older ladies out there, but not really the kind of books I was interested in. I think we read uh, one of them was like some the potato diaries or something. But anyway, not exactly the kind of books I was interested in. So I think this is neat. Obviously, if you're listening to the podcast, you're like-minded, you're looking to grow, evolve as a trader. So what we did is, you know, we've got, we've got the whole team here today. We've got Kim, we've got Steven, and obviously myself, and we each picked three books, you know, in, in Steven's standard fashion, three for him was one. But anyway, we, we picked our, our three favorite books. Um, we're going to go over a couple of them and kind of lay out the schedule. And what we're going to do is hopefully, you know, hopefully you as the listener will participate. And what we're going to do, we're going to announce the books today. We're going to talk about why we recommended them, why we liked them. Then we've got a schedule. We're going to actually ideally reread I'm, I'm I'll reread these books my three over and over again we'll reread these or maybe read them for the first time with you the listener and you know and, and kind of collaborate through the magic of the internet so so that's the plan for the next few weeks today we're going to start with introducing our books I would say go right to Stephen what uh, what's what's your favorite book Stephen and, and and why is it 
Uh, I mean, today was, a, today was a particularly challenging podcast because you asked me to read a book and I haven't read very many. Uh, so it was difficult, but I was, I was lucky in the fact that I have read one. Uh, and mine is uh, Being in the Zone, or Trading in the Zone. It's by uh, Mark Douglas. And uh, I, haven't, I haven't read too many trading books because, I mean, you guys may shut it down, but a lot of them go over the same ground. But what I particularly liked about Trading in the Zone uh, was and and this is a small preface to the book. He, he basically talks about the fact that says you might you might think that you don't have enough market knowledge or you're going through a bad market cycle, but the chances are uh, you do have enough knowledge and your psychology is wrong. <laughs> he talks about how you should fix your psychology, and uh, I thought that was fascinating because so many people will be studying, studying, studying ten hours a day, and then they'll lose, and then they'll think oh, I need to study more. But maybe you need to work on your mental game more than your uh, learning knowledge game. Yeah, I'll, I'll let I'll let Kim comment on that. But I want to make I mean, make a point. Like we we just got I just got back from from the Tim Sykes annual conference, and something I try and do every year. You know, we had a ton of great speakers with a bunch of charts, 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 yeah. setups, setups, setups. I never do that in my presentations because I know that you know everybody else is going to break down the charts break down you know michael goods going over sec filings all i talk about i did a mindset you know 45 minutes of mindset and i think that that is and obviously that's why i want to demure to to kim that's her specialty and and that is also i did just read mark douglas's book about six months or so ago and 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 loved it as well so yeah i'm with you i mean i think that's it's like almost everything around the wisdom of trading and all the knowledge that you have talked about all the time, Tim, and Stephen, even that you've talked about, if you don't have that foundation. I just think the psychology is the foundation of the house you're building. And if that is off kilter in any shape or form, the whole house is going to not stay standing. Um, now, are you, Kim, are, are you familiar with the book or, or Mark at I all? I haven't or read this one. Okay. No. Perfect. I'm looking forward to it. I, and I agree with the statement that Stephen said that, you know, it's, it's the psychology. And that's what I see even in the listeners' emails to me. Almost everybody's asking me for help with their trading. And they're telling me, you know, uh, that, that everything is fine except for their trading. And then when I dig a little deeper, they begin to reveal that actually personally, there's some discord in their life in some manner, shape or form. And I, I just have to jump in and say, because it's so relevant, uh, the, the number one question, and it's this, I'm in advertising, it's the same in advertising. You've got to ask yourself, why? Why am I doing what I'm doing? Why am I taking this action? If it's an advertisement, it's like, why am I creating this ad? If it's trading, it's like, why am I taking this trade right now? What's the psychological reason behind it? Is it because I want to make money? And if it's because I want to make money, it's the wrong idea. Uh, or is it because I want to follow a, a long-term strategy that that is the right strategy? And and if that's the case, then then you're doing the right thing. But if you like, I want to feel good. I want to feel happy. I want to I want to get some money back. I want to I want to I want to feel like I can do this. I want to prove something to myself and others. Then that they're all the wrong reasons. They're all the reasons of the ego. Totally. Yeah, I've, you know been, I mean? I've been I've been very impressed with. I'll, I'll let you answer as well, Kim. But I've been very impressed, Stephen, with with your openness about that exact topic i mean Massive. we've had a lot of podcasts where i, I greatly respect steven i mean we're, he, 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 he's come on here and, and told the world that he just wanted action you know and there's a lot of people that won't admit that you know they'll okay, say a lot of guts it takes exactly guts yeah to be able to admit that truth and that's part partly why i think it's hard you know steven i has done a lot of self-reflection every conversation we've had on online is him looking at like wait a minute i'm going to be curious about why i took that action but that takes courage and a certain amount of you know comfort with yourself and looking at your humanity i think that's why it's hard maybe for other people if they haven't been prone to self-reflect for them to admit just to themselves, right? Never mind people, but to admit to themselves that, wow, I'm taking this action because I'm bored. Like that might be hard for people to see about themselves, but welcome to the club. Like you're just a human being. Of course, there's going to be that kind of, but there's going to be some kind of motive there. And just being with the truth of that is going to be game changing for, for everybody. 
you know but so, I, I don't i don't think i don't think any successful trader is not i don't think any successful person in the world is not self-reflective I would agree. Uh, yep. we all i mean it's like richard branson's famous quote uh, say yes to the deal and then figure out how to do it later <laughs> yep. we're all we're all learning here we're all we're all making it up as we go to a degree but uh, self self reflectiveness is the only way to to grow experience yeah. and obviously but it takes a lot of courage to be self reflective you know we like there's a great quote this guy anthony demeo that says uh, people want relief they don't want the cure right why because the cure is painful and and ultimately being self reflective about what what's motivating your trade in that moment is you having to you know, potentially swallow a jagged pill of the fact that you're doing it because you're bored or because you want action or to make the money back on what you lost earlier. No, but, but, and, and Tim won't relate to this, but I, I, like if I was going to make a metaphor, I would say trading is like being hungry and having a Mars bar in front of you. Uh, being hungry and having a snicker in front of you. I and always like, eat some Chinese takeout. You're hungry. Ah, Chinese takeout is better. No, but you're like, you're like, I'm hungry and this food is bad for us. But I really want this. Well, you can just say, hey, I, I, I'm, I'm open. My, my vice is pizza. Okay. So, you know, while I'm, what while can, candy is disgusting to me, if you, if you inserted pizza, I would, I would, I would be in the same boat with you. If, so, if you've got pizza. pineapple, if you've got pineapple on top of that shit, um, no, no, now. I'm ending it now. <laughs> I'm a quit. So, uh, so we'll, we'll move on, Kim. What's, uh, we'll, we'll jump over to Kim's first choice. So just for the listener out there, that is, um, if you, you know, if you're buying these books so that you can follow along, it is uh, Trading in the Zone by Mark Douglas. Trading in the Zone is the book for January. And Kim, what's your, what's your number one trading related book? Mine is The Hour Between Dog and Wolf. And the subtitle is Risk Taking, Gut Feelings, and the Biology of Boom and Bust. And so so yeah. what, what first question is why? What, we're, we're talking about the why here. Why did you pick that one? I picked this one because it was uh, like earth shattering when I read it. Uh, probably read it about eight to 10 years ago. And I think for myself and the coaching that I was doing at the time, I got really kind of awakened to the fact that the physiology of a trader uh, was so important to look at and could be influencing people in ways they didn't realize. Uh, and I, you know, got really excited. I wrote John Coates an email, which is what I do when I get really excited about a book I've read. And I was just like, oh my God, this, this, how is this book, whoops, how is this book not at every trader, like mandatory reading? See, I have, I mean, you know, I mean, obviously, I haven't read I, I've far from every trading book, but I've read a lot of them, and I get the Amazon recommendations. I have never, so I'm excited. I have n never heard that title in my life. Cool. It's, it's, cool. you're, you're excited to read that title. I'm just excited to read the second book that I've ever read. <laughs> So he basically is a neuroscientist and he winds up uh, revealing that risk taking and stress transforms our body chemistry. And it, it will drive us to extremes in dangerous kind of situations and it'll make us sometimes overly gun shy uh, at times when we really need to not be. So he, he, he measured traders' uh, testosterone levels and hormone levels uh, for a particular period of time and saw this consistency in results. And no, I mean, it feels it's so, so is, so is, is, these I, uh, I, meltdowns, you know, the 08 crisis, it happens because we, they are all the traders in the world are all physiologically having the same reaction. It sounds, sounds very, sounds very interesting. I think anything related to science and in our neuroscience or biochemistry, I think it's, you can't really doubt it because it's a, an experiment with many people. But, um, but, but at this, yeah, so it sounds, it sounds like an interesting read, I, I, but I th it, it makes us think of trading in general. Everyone's got their own personalities. Like I always think of Mark Crook. Mark Crook is the, like the safest trader, right? Yep. He's a super safe trader where Tim Grittani is more of this risk taker and ducks us on a whole nother level. So what I'm more interested in, I guess, is not just the environment or this societal, is that a word? I think it is. Societal impact that, that changes in the environments can have, but I'm also interested in how specific personalities 
uh, which personality is better in trading mm. and, and, and how do certain personalities react to the market? Well, so I have a question for you. So is it that maybe those personalities aren't better in general, but maybe better, like if there's a guy who likes to be riskier, maybe he follows a certain pattern that yep. he's perfect for. And if you are somebody who's more kind of security, wanting to be secure, then maybe you have to find the, the kind of theory you're going to run with because it suits your temperament. I mean, am I, yeah. am I right that you all... No. Everyone has their own style. Like when, when people say that they're too scared to take a trade and they're like, they couldn't build up the courage to put money in the market for three months. Like, I've, and I don't know about Tim. I don't know if Tim like ever experienced that, but for me, I'm the opposite. I will, I will throw as, as many thousands of dollars as I can, which is not a lot, but I'll throw as many thousands of dollars as I can at, at, a, at, a, at a low float spike at the open. Um, and I'll think nothing of it, but I'm, I'm super reckless and that's the vice, but, but others that would, they would never be able to do it. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, you know, but, but I also think it's just, you know, you know, one of the reasons that I was, you know, a part-time trader for years was because of exactly that. I wasn't willing, uh, you know, I wasn't, you know, I had a family, I had little kids back when I started trading, they were toddlers, you know, Lily was a baby. You know, I wasn't going to throw a bunch of money at the market, as you say. Now I was willing to speculate and trade, but I think that is what has kind of built my more conservative style. But the simple fact was I was a, you know, 40 year old dude with a mortgage and kids. So I have a different mindset than you do as well, or, or a different approach, I guess I would say. Ah, but, but I mean, but neither of all losing much money though. Like I'll, I'll never lose more than 500 to a thousand dollars a month. Yeah. But, uh, but I'll still build 500 to a couple of thousand, then I'll throw it all plus leverage. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but but, but, many, do, but right? many people can't do that. Like they, they just can't do it. It's, yep. uh, yeah. So how much, how much does he talk about testosterone? He talks about it a lot. He, okay, he, has his two, he does his uh, studies. It, I, I don't know if you ever looked on my, on my website. I have their two scientific studies from John Coates' uh, experiments. They're two separate ones where he did, I think, over 100 traders in one and perhaps uh, 60 in the other. And then he tracks them. But he just, he just feels that this, that yes, we can train ourselves, you know, and our bodies even. And that's part of why, you know, I'm an advocate about being in tune to what's happening inside your body. You know, that's one of the things Steve and I talked about in the uh, twist. What we talked about, like, what happens if you start to physiologically feel yourself reacting then you, you you first you have to notice and then you can potentially do things that help you kind of okay i'm reacting not responding and then begin to calm it down so he talks about that too well because um, I, I i'm curious i can kind of as, as i'm prone to do i'm going to bring this back to myself um i'm curious to read about this because <laughs> la, la, last few months I've been supplementing with, with TRT, testosterone replacement therapy. Oh, have. So hey. I said never to do that. And you did it anyway. Exactly. What? Exactly. Because, look, because look of that podcast listen. where look you were talking, I only got this TRT because you were talking about my feminine side <laughs> and it, you know, so, so um, I didn't get tested. Hopefully my, hopefully the, the FDA isn't listening to this. I basically bullied my doctor into giving me TRT without even testing my levels. You have to but, be careful, man. You've got to be careful because this, the naturopath that I partnered up with, I mean, honestly, you're going to read in these studies, you read the book. I won't have to say anything, but you can, sometimes testosterone cannot be your friend. Well, that's why I'm, that's why I want to read it. I'm curious to see. So, uh, so. honestly, Tim, Tim Bowen is like, the most disciplined, regimented, marine focused, like, like writes his trade plan down and follows it, doesn't break the rules. He's been doing it for 20 years. I, I think some testosterone isn't going to shake his game up. He, and I just figure I have, I've had enough brain injuries through the years. I probably need it. So, so my, but, but just anyway, so, so I'll, just keep, you have somebody monitoring you, right? Oh yeah. I'll get, I'll get tested oh. in a couple months. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it's, it's a, a couple months. Yeah. I would do it in four weeks. That's a long time. Uh, well, you, no. you know what? You're going to read this book and then I won't have to say anything because you'll see it all laid out in black and white. 
fair enough fair enough so I don't i would say don't read the book because well we'll have to because it's a club but like you don't want you don't want shit in your head like just you run the testosterone take double the dose i would say I, see, that's what i was gonna say i'm not double, I'm double down up. now yeah just double so. that shit up and lift heavier weights and feel like a real man and go hunting in the woods and kill some animals like, I, I, perfect <laughs> plan baby perfect <laughs> As, and like and invite me out and i'll take some testosterone with you and maybe i'll get less fat <laughs> fair enough fair enough so uh in recap um that is the hour be- between dog and wolf which i love the title anyway but uh that will be the december book so again you know amazon or even better your local bookstore but uh definitely check out the dog and the wolf um we'll move along to my number one choice which you know is all when it comes to trading related, this may not be my favorite book, but when it comes to tr- well, it's up there. But when it comes to trading related, it is the Daily Trading Coach by Dr. Brett Steenbarger. Um, one of the reasons I love it so much is I get it. It's 2019. Many people like Stephen have read one book in their life, uh, or maybe none. Um, the greatest thing I like about the, the daily trading coaches, it's basically like a daily devotional. If, you, if you're yeah. familiar with that from like a religious perspective, you know, what Dr. Brent does is he has 101 lessons. It's a 300 page book. So you can do the math. It's like three pages a lesson. You can read them in five or 10 minutes. Every one of them I think is on point. Um, as a funny aside, I first bought this on my Kindle and I highlighted so many passages on, on the Kindle that like halfway through the book, it was like, you can't highlight any more passages. It like really? stopped me. I, <laughs> no, I, I don't I think that. it thought I was like trying to, you know, like pirate the true. book or something. But it's a uh, typo and exaggeration. No, no, for real, for real. I, I, that is, I, I, hand, hand on the day trading Bible. That happened. But just smoke, smoke, smoke started coming out and it blew up. No, <laughs> I, I, no, it just said you can't highlight anymore. So, so anyway, that, that, uh, I'll, I'll let Kim and, and, uh, and, and Stephen comment. But that, first of all, knowledge wise, I think it's great. But the biggest thing and the reason I recommend it so much is, again, if you're not, I get it. Everybody's busy. You can't sit down for an hour a day and read five, 10 minutes a lesson. And I just say, read one a day. And you know, six months later, you've read the whole book. So okay. can I, can I just say some of 21st century? Yes. Okay. You can get it in audio book. So if you're like going to work or you're walking to work or you're on a bus or whatever, then that's just 10 minutes in your ears and yep. you don't even, you don't even need to read it. That's all. That's all I've got. And I've read it. It's a good book. And, and I'll let Kim talk about the rest. I haven't read it. I'm looking forward to reading it. Uh, and I guess I just want to be an advocate for reading. I know everybody likes their audio books, but I can't, t- because one of the things that when you read, it facilitates you having more empathy for yourself and for other people. It helps you be able to relate to people who think different than you. And I feel every trader really needs to be able to not just understand their own selves, but understand those out there. And my understanding, everything about trading that I've read are books that tell us, you know, they're, t- they're talking about the concept that in that moment, before you make your trade, you have to be in tune to what you think the other traders are going to yes, be doing. Yep, and sure. if you're not being exposed to other thought processes, uh, I don't know that you can do that successfully. But, yeah. But- and I, you know, and again, I, I get it. Everybody's busy. You know, the audio book is a great route. The only thing I'll say, and, and not to, you know, not to argue with Steven, but you oh know, I love podcasts, you know, listen, whether it be the steady trade podcast or the Joe Rogan podcast, I listen to pretty much every one. The only thing I don't like about audio books is I find myself kind of tuning out a little bit where you're like, Oh, what was that? You know? So again, do what you got to do to, to, to show up for the book club. But I do, I am old school like Kim and I think there's something happening. I mean, obviously mankind came out with the written word, you know, and, and I, I just think there's something going on there uh, versus listening, you know, so. I, I, I could not disagree more. Uh, and I'm almost disgusted. <laughs> Like, I'm not even joking. I'm almost disgusted in what you guys are saying. I mean, Kim, like, I don't want to pull you up, but how there is more empathy in reading a book than there is listening to it, I don't know. 
Oh, oh no, I didn't say okay. there's more empathy for reading versus From reading. listening. That's not what I was saying. I was saying okay. reading, I was an advocate of reading. Um, I'm not a fan of audio, but th- I was not making a case okay. against audio. But, uh, but, but, but you guys are both, you have a preference towards reading. But I, I would argue that audio is more personable and personal because you actually have the voice of the author communicating it with, with the tonality that they want to express. Whether you're, when you read, you're interpreting the book the way you want to interpret it. Fair but enough. with audio, you're actually getting how the author wants to deliver it. Yep. So yep. You know, and I'll admit, you know, again, my point would simply be, you know, I, I, I joke about having ADD. I don't think I actually do. But, you know, again, for me, when you're reading, you have to stay engaged. For me with the audio book, it's just kind of easy That's for me true. to just kind of, you know, see a butterfly and wander off type thing. So I also That's need just the me. process so. when I'm reading a book, like I'll stop a yeah. lot of times and I'll be like, whoa, what the hell was that yeah. that I just read? And then I'll just process, put it down, think about Look at it. Look Stephen's face. Back. He's not convinced. <laughs> I'm trying not we're, to talk we're, we're, we're doing a very poor job of selling him on this. He's got like this curled up lip of like disgust. <laughs> oh, I'm, I, we're in the digital age, guys. The, 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 <laughs> you just do audio? Millennials. I've, read like, I've read like one book in my life. I cannot. I cannot read. I cannot read. Never end. I mean, I, I can read real short form. Like I can read uh, good, good. Good newspaper, like obviously not the red tops, the t- the what you call them again. See, I don't even read them that much. That I can't remember them. I'll read like in England, What's it's like the Times, the Times or the Guardian or the New York Times, like some like kind of stuff. Red red tops trash, like trashy okay. news. Oh, like tab tabloids, tabloids. Yeah, yeah, tabloids. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, okay. So I'll I'll read the good newspapers and I'll read um good good magazine journalism, but like high end. But other than that, I'll, like I'll never like, read a book, never. That's reading magazines and newspapers. I don't think is anything like a book. Like if you get a juicy, juicy book that like fiction, even that's completely enrolling. I mean, the whole maybe world. maybe we should get like Stephen to read Fifty Shades of Grey. I don't think he would like that one. You don't think so? No, I don't know. There's like bondage and <laughs> just just put one put one lady boy in there, and I'm and I'm. So- <laughs> <laughs> on that note, on the lady boy note, we will move on. Um, so that being said, uh, the first book in, in the Steady Trade Book Club, so for November, we're again starting out with an easy one. I mean, this is as easy a read as it gets. You know, if you think about it, if, if, if you read it in the month of November, it's three lessons a day. They're all five, maybe. I mean, I don't even know if any of them are 10 minutes, I think most of them are five or get the audio book. November is the daily trading coach by Dr. Brett Steenbarger. So um, back to Kim because Steven only has his one book. We'll, uh, we'll go back to Kim with her second favorite trading book. Okay. The second favorite one is the inner voice of trading by Mike Martin. He's somebody I got to interview for my book. Uh, let's see. Can you guys see that there without the glare? Uh, This is a short book. I'm going to read the subtitle. Eliminate the noise and profit from the system and strategies that are right for you. Nice. Uh, And I think not only because it's short, but I feel he wanted to be really succinct about what he's trying to get across. And he talks about the journey he had with his teacher and how he really got that this was uh, an emotional and mental game and his tips and tricks around how to get rid of that noise and listen to that inner voice within yourself. So now, now one thing I'll say, and then I'll, I'll let, let Steven comment, you know, I, I don't, I mean, I'm as much as I talk about loving to read, I don't, I mean, short is not a bad thing. I mean, I, 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 I read so many like self-improvement books, which I probably read too many, but it's like so many times I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, I can tell, you're stretching this out to that 300 page limit. You know, it's like, I'm like, we could have gotten this done buddy in 150 or a hundred, you know? And, and it's like, you're just repeating yourself in a different way. And I'm on page 225. I can tell you're just trying to hit that 300 page number. So to me, short is not a bad thing. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And, and there's such a thing as building an argument. And I get that there's building an argument, building a case. I get that there's a step-by-step process to, to like layer in how, how one would think, but yeah, but you can tell when something's a bit verbose, 
you know what verbose means, Tim? I do. <laughs> you can tell when something's a bit verbose. I, I always, <laughs> whenever you're speaking, I'm always like, it's like, it's like this flashy neon billboard anytime you're speaking. So. All but, I want uh, out of you as a co-host is like, <laughs> yes, no, you're so smart, Tim, you know, stuff like that's all I want out of you. <laughs> nah, I will not, I will not give, I mean, honestly, you've been a good teacher and pro, but, uh, the, the most recent compliment and, and I'll, it's, it's on the subject of the inner voice. Um, my trading turned around. I mean, I was, I was a successful trader for, for a few years. Then I was a badly losing trader for a year, me third year in weirdly. Um, but then I, I've turned around and I've never gone back to losing. I've been winning uh, for a while now. And it's ever since I had that chat with Kim and, and, and it's on the subject of the, of the voice and the inner voice. And it all comes back down to why, what we're talking about at the start of it. Why are you doing what you're doing? Um, why are you taking this? I'm taking it because I want to make money. Why am I taking this? Because I'm taking it because I'm bored. And it's listening to your inner voice. And, um, and when you start thinking, nah, it's not the right reason why I should be taking this trade. I'm, I'm going to put half in now and I'll put half in later because that's the right thing to do. Not the thing that pl pleases my ego. That's the right thing to do. Um, that's when I had real results trading and uh, I've got to credit Kim. And, and, just, and just real quick for the listener, most of those conversations are in the archive, right? Yeah, that, that, was a tra that transformed uh, my trading from uh, okay, being awesome. a losing okay. trader to yeah. a winning trader. And that, that was captured live. She walked me through the process of of why uh, Kim, you like, you can talk about it, but like we we chatted, like it was about the ego, it was about fulfilling instant gratitude, somewhere along them lines. But do you remember more? Or no, I just I just remembered that you spoke something. You said, you know what I, you said something to the effect of I've never really been connected or in tune or or present thoughts, to my trade. Yeah. That yeah. was the yeah. statement, and it, and it just kind of came, and I was like, whoa. That, that was the moment yeah. where I think you had a, a breakthrough. That was a huge breakthrough. It was a huge one. It was a huge so, one. And then what, an episode before that, I think that was the second coaching session that was, free, that was on live. But the first coaching session, I think we identified that there were some needs that you weren't getting met in this work in general that maybe needed to be addressed. And, and getting those met uh, in other forms uh, just having the freedom to like Choose. be getting them met someplace else opened up you because you were kind of in a place of frustration with trading and maybe wanting to walk away from it. And I think you just need to give yourself permission to feel those feelings and that yeah. opened up you getting to number two, which was seeing that. So, so, so yeah, I mean, and just a couple of things you'll want to walk away from trading a million times. And I've said this a million times. <laughs> Been there, like, done that. Yep. Yeah. A million times. And, and, Tim Bowen, um, it's funny because he's like a, he's like a friend now. But when we, um, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like when I, when we first met, like I was like, oh my god, it's Tim Bowen. He's like a mini celebrity or something. Like, cause, <laughs> nah, because people don't realize, like in the trading world, like in the trading, and like I get it too a little bit. Like when I go to the conference and people want pictures, I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> Like it surprises you. Like people, you have this reputation from being on a podcast, and uh, and I was like, oh my god, it's Tim Bone. I'm actually going to meet the guy who I've watched all the time, and I was a bit in awe a little bit um, until I got annoyed, and then I realized there was, there's nothing special at all. But but uh, the first thing you ever said to me, and, I, and I'll remember it forever, and I've told it a million times. You said, whatever you do, never quit. Just don't quit. And I get what you mean now because you see situations a million times. You make the same mistake a million times. Eventually, you start thinking, nah, I made this mistake one too many times. Do you know what I mean? Yo, yeah, yeah. So, um, so, so uh, thank you. Thank you for that compliment. And, uh, and I think, you know, that's why we talk so much about cutting the losses, you know, because you know, the biggest thing is you got to stay in the game, you know, don't quit. Yep. Don't blow yep. up your account. Please. I mean, obviously it's really hard to not quit when you blow up your account. You know? So that's why we <laughs> preach, you know, small losses, small losses, small losses. And, and uh, no, I totally agree because I mean, no, well, somebody, somebody has, has done this, has become consistently profitable in six months, but there's like one of them, you know, I mean, again, yes. Gratani took a year plus, you know, so the biggest thing is if, if you quit week one, week two, week 10, you know, you're done, you know, and then you're, then you're just a quitter. That's all you are. So My favorite quote is Churchill's quote. Do you know it? 
Do you know that one, Tim? <laughs> Who's Churchill? <laughs> yeah, obviously I'm joking, guys. I was, I was, ho- I was giving you a chance. <laughs> you know, I, I was, I was hoping the between Brits your then. homeland and <laughs> his <laughs> drunkenness, you would, you would at least <laughs> identify with him to a certain extent. But <laughs> never. Go, go ahead with the quote. Never, never, never quit. Like, is, is it never quit or did you just stumble on those words? I don't think he stumbled. <laughs> very intentional about all four of those. And that's, but it's so hard not to quit. Sure. Nah, it's not though. It's not like if like I have some weird addictive, I'm addicted to trading. Like I'm addicted to it. <laughs> well, it's, it's not, I mean, I don't, I, that sounds bad, but I tell you. You, 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 as much as you know, I know addiction has a negative connotation, but it's yeah, like nice. you, you need something to get you through the dark days. And I guess if that's Absolutely. addiction, you know, you know, maybe that's a good thing. So, no, but yeah, I, I wouldn't say I'm addicted to trading. I'd say I'm addicted to winning. Like I'm addicted to being a winner. I'm addicted to feeling successful. I'm addicted to feeling like a man. You know what I mean? I'm addicted to winning. Like, so if, if you want to, if you want to say I'm a bad person because I'm addicted to success, then, then sue us. Do you know sure. what I mean? You are too. You're, 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 you're the men of men. Oh, I mean, you know, you know, we, 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 we joke about it a lot. I mean, it's like, I mean, if you follow me on Instagram, you can see my daughter, my daughter is probably more competitive than I am. And obviously yeah. she gets it from me. I mean, she power lifts, she plays volleyball, she runs track, she plays basketball. But I mean, there, to me, hell, there's a, there's a podcast, highly recommended podcast called addicted to success. I don't see what's, Hey, I got no problem with what's being addicted to success. So, no. but Tim, what would be the need underneath that su- the need for success? There she always is has to go deeper. She, she always has to go deeper. You can't, you can't just accept it. <laughs> <laughs> can't, can't, can't just that would be happy. <laughs> but, but that's why we love her. That's why we love her. <laughs> come on, let's go, to Kim. How do we go deeper? What is? Come on, let's go deep. I'm ready. What, what, if you are addicted to success or think you're addicted to success, what do you think the need? underneath success is the the rush the endorphins the, yeah the, the adventure serotonin. right yeah. so you so your need for adventure you know remember i'm borderline a caveman i want to go out <laughs> kill something and bring it back to the tribe okay that 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 that, that 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 that's <laughs> you know i'm i'm like i did my 23 and me i think i need to redo it because i'm only like 10 percent neanderthal i was kind of pissed about that i think i'm more like 90 percent. so for me it's just you know again we we talked about it that provider aspect i want to kill some shit and bring it back to the people of the village so. we should have a competition where i kill you or you kill me and one of us dies no Fair enough. I, I, I feel <laughs> kind of confident with that. So. Um, Isn't that movie called The Game? Isn't that the movie called The Game? With Michael yeah, Michael, it's, right? ah, it's a very good movie. But, but what, okay, so the, the, the thought of going, the, the need for advent, no, the need for success. Success is adventure. Adventure. Really? Yeah. Adventure, I, I agree. Yeah. creativity, contribution. I mean, there's a slew of needs that if somebody is saying, oh, I'm addicted to success, I would say, you're, you're actually a, not addicted, but you just have a really non-negotiable need for adventure, a really high non-negotiable need for creativity or contribution or action, right? And those are needs that maybe you can get met in your trading day, but let's say your need for adventure can't get met. Everything you're telling me, Tim, you know, in that other conversation about that there's five particular patterns you want to look for. Yep. Well, let's say you didn't get your need for adventure met that day with your trading. So then go do jump bungee jumping or go do a zip line course, you know, find a way to get your need for adventure met. If it, if it isn't going to be through your trade, cause you may have a higher need for that than the average bear and you're not going to get it met. If you want to be a successful trader in your trading. Did you okay. say average bear? Because he's like the least bear of all. He's a bull. Can't help it. That's just maybe. sometimes. <laughs> the, <laughs> so he's the whole, worst bear I, of all time. Uh, well, I, I I kind of think of you as my cub in the bear cub <laughs> relationship. So, I'm I, um, anyway, so March is the inner voice of trading. Um, check that one out as well. You've got a few months to get it and then we'll uh, we'll move on. We'll kind of maybe speed up a little bit here so we can get you through all of the books. Um, the second for me is, uh, it's kind of pricey. 
Um, it's, it's, it's hard to find too, but you can get it out there. Um, it's also, I know you can get a PDF of it as well, but it is technical analysis on multiple time frames by Brian Shannon. Very textbooky, but, um, especially like for Kim, you know, you know, that come an audio book. <laughs> no, it doesn't. And you cannot, you cannot get the audio book because it's very visual chart based. This does so, not sound like a fun one. I have to be honest. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Steven, like you can look one. at all the pictures, Steven, you'll, you'll like right. it. So no, but success isn't fun. Like the road to success isn't fun. It has sure. its highs and lows, but it's not fun. <laughs> Are you, like, you using my own words against me? <laughs> no, I'm serious. Like, like, fair enough. I'm an advocate of audiobooks, but like, if you really want to be a successful trader, it's not by listening to an audiobook while lying in the sun drinking drinking a Corona with lime. <laughs> fair, fair enough. It's not like you you get successful by doing what others won't do. So, uh, and part of that is reading that uh, big book with the pictures. Well, it's not of- actually not that big, um, but but let me let me give you let me give you the sales pitch. Nice. So this is actually an old book. I, I bought it when I first got started. I think I bought it like a month after it got published in two thousand nine, I believe. Um, but that is why I think it's so good because. Everything in here is applicable to today. I mean, Brian Shannon would actually, Brian would love to have you on the podcast. Um, And uh, he's Brian, check him out online. He's been around longer than I have, but uh, it's amazing the way these chart patterns repeat, you know, these, these, uh, you know, you know, he's got patterns in here that we were trading yesterday. You know, he focuses on a lot of higher price stocks but the same patterns apply to the low price stock. So it is like an 80 or $90 book. I know that's a lot, but again, you know, like Steven said, if you want to be successful, it's not easy. I mean, if, if you want to be successful at something and you can't stomach an $80 book, maybe this isn't for you. I mean, I get Am I going to understand this book having not treated truth? What do you feel for some I think, Brian, I think Brian does a very good job. When I bought it, I was very, very new. Okay. Um, I was probably only six months, nine months into studying part time. Okay. So, um, and none of it, I don't recall struggling with it. Or okay, anything. cool. So, so I think, I think it, I think Brian does a great job. So, no, but, but, but like, that's the mod thing though. Like everyone thinks trading's this weird complex thing and like, no. I'll never forget, <laughs> I'll never forget that. And we can say it as traders for, for years, but but I'll never forget when I first opened the interactive progress dashboard and I was like, Oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, but but like now like I look but at it. You and don't, I was like, it's it's like it's like Excel. You don't yeah, use ninety nine like exactly. percent of the stuff in there. You know? <laughs> That's the best metaphor you've come up with ever, probably. I hate um Excel. Nah, but honestly, like when you think of trading, there's a float, there's volume, and there's candles that go up and down. And that's it. The, and there's some news as well. There's some news and there's a sector, and that's it. That's it, right? Is there anything else? I mean, and there's like past history of patents as well. Exactly, exactly. Now, it's there's way more flesh on the bones, but those uh, are the bones. Those are the bones right there. I mean, and and people, you know, they they want these technical indicators. They want the Ikemocho cloud. Yeah. You know, they <laughs> want to find some magic in some SEC filing. I mean, yeah. nah. it's it's really what Stephen just said. You know, uh, and, and Tim, you said it best years ago. I was like, Tim, what's your style? What do you trade? What do you trade? And you were like, I trade price action. That's yep. all I trade. If it's strong, I, if it looks strong, I bind. If it, and if it looks weak, it's uh, I'm shorting or I'm selling. That's and it's right. as simple as that. But but that simplicity comes from years of screen time, and and that's the best way to summarize this. So um, that is the book. We'll, we'll again, we'll move ahead here. We got one more book. I I picked three. So. Um, then and we'll wrap up. So that is again the technical analysis using multiple time frames by Brian Shannon, and that is February's book. So now we will wrap up with my favorite book of all time, overall. And I also, you know, and I talked about this. I actually posted my Instagram a few weeks ago. How I think it's very applicable to trading. And actually, Kim and I talked about that exact point uh, on a podcast a couple weeks ago. Um, I I left my copy over there. I've got like three copies, but um, it is the Fountainhead, which longtime listeners of the podcast will know that Stephen has been supposed to read this book about three times. (laughs) 
my, one of my favorite memories, we're talking about memory lane, is I, I still remember when I, when I assigned the fountainhead to Steven, and he was so proud. He went to the mall. You know, he posted to his Instagram that he had just bought <laughs> Atlas Shrug, and he was so happy to get started on this assignment, you know, which is by the same author. But like 15 or 20 minutes after the podcast, he bought the wrong book, which he then proceeded <laughs> to never read either. But that being said, my favorite overall book is The Fountainhead by Ayn Rand. And also, I think it is a trading book, though there's never any stock trading in it. So um, we'll jump to Kim because I know, you know, Kim and I are kindred spirits in our love of Ayn Rand. So what do, what, do, what, do you, what do you think? What, what's your take on the It's such a perfect fountain? book. It's such a perfect book because the book is about how to stay stoic in the midst of a lot of heat. And he's being personally attacked, the hero of that book, Howard Rohr, for his beliefs and his philosophy around how he wants to build his buildings as an architect. And he just won't compromise and he won't be swayed by uh, all the things that I think anybody who's more human than maybe Howard Rourke are swayed by. So I think it's such a great pick. And, it, yeah, and it's he, also going to show personality, right? It's a, it's a novel, but that's why novels I think are so helpful in our real life. So. And can I just interject and say if I'm me and the other non-nerds, what does stoic mean? Uh, stoic means to stay, uh, to have equanimity, to, to stay neutral in the midst uh, okay. of the storm. Okay. Which, which on that note, Great books. I highly recommend uh, Ryan Holiday. Um, mm -hmm. Obstacle is the way. Yeah. Um, I almost picked that today. Um, talking about adversity, Obstacle is the way. Great book. Um, actually, another great reference. I, I just introduced Kim to Tom Brady like two weeks ago. Yes. Um, the I'm Patriots. On the, <laughs> the Patriots are well known. They actually, um, uh, Bill Belichick, their coach, handed out copies of The Obstacle is the Way to all of the team. You know, this is like two Super Bowls ago. And then he also has, back to the daily devotional idea, Ryan came out with uh, the Daily Stoic, which is 365 Stoic lessons from the Greeks, and, and et cetera. So highly recommend everything by Ryan Holiday as well. Yes, yeah. He's, he's amazing. Do, do, so, you, do you know his book, that first book he came out when he was doing PR called, uh, yeah, the don't, is it don't lie to me. Or, yeah. Um, Trust me, it, I'm lying. Trust me, yeah, I'm lying. Yep. Yeah, which is that, actually uh, Stephen. Uh, uh, a, it's an advertising book, no? Yeah. Yes. yeah we've got the book. It's orange, right? It's orange yeah, with black text. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah we've, we've got it in the little book thing there. I've never read it. It's, it's wild. It, it, you know, I read it. I I don't even know how I found it, but you know, especially from a marketing standpoint, you would find it interesting. But it uh, it, it all it, it kind of pisses you off a little bit you off. when it, you when you're like these guys are playing all these games, you know, to get me to buy their stuff, you know. So we're all yeah, being manipulated, I, but knowing uh, we're being manipulated is half the battle. Sure. So sure. yeah, it's a good. So one. Stephen, how, how do you feel about? getting through an 800 page book yeah it's gonna be a tough one i think the best thing i can do is uh is get the audio book yeah. and uh, and put it on just before i fall asleep and then hopefully when i wake up it'll be done <laughs> <laughs> i tell you to those this is the one and and we can kind of finish on this i will i will capitulate to steven a little bit both atlas shrug and fountainhead audiobooks are amazing the 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 voice actor that does them is killer. Um, you know, you've got, cause both Atlas Shrugged and Fountainhead have strong female leads. I mean, he does such a great job, you know, doing the voice acting. So e even, and actually like Kim, if, if you've only read them, the, I loved the yeah. audiobooks. The he guy does. that reads them is He's awesome. He's awesome. It's been, a, it's been a while since I've read the Fountainhead and uh, should we tell the audience there is a movie? But that would be cheating, right? Oh, I'll I'll, I'll watch that tonight. Thank you. Great. Yeah. That, but, uh, see, but this is what when we so so to, <laughs> to the listeners out there, the book of the month for April is the Fountainhead by Ayn Rand. We'll record this podcast like say May first, so Stephen will watch the movie of the Fountainhead an hour and a half before we're set to record. <laughs> but can I can I can I just say one thing? I am um, I'm. I'm 
uh, whether it's a good book or whether it's a good movie, uh, the, oh, let us rephrase the sign of a good book or a good movie, even when it's finished, it will change your perspective of life and it'll change how you think about the world. And it's beyond your entertainment or it's beyond the narrative of the characters or the protagonist. It's how, you, it's how it changes your view of the world. And, uh, and I watched Ad Astra uh, last weekend and, uh, and that, that changed my view on life. And, uh, and a lot of people said it was crap. I was boring. I, I, I found it. What is it? What is it? I, I'm, I don't Ad, Ad Astra with Brad Pitt. And it's about him going to space and, uh, and find these fathers. His father's a famous astronaut and he's an up and coming astronaut. It's, it's, a, it's an absolutely. How, how do you guys not know Ad Astra? It's, it's a, with Brad Pitt. Eh. Never heard of it. Is it new? Uh, is it a new movie? Yeah, it's, it's a pretty new movie and, um, and it changed how I think about life. Wow, beautiful. There's, wow. there's some deep themes between. Oh, it's showing. And, it's like it's out right now. Yeah, it's, it's, oh, yeah, it's okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right so now. It's, yeah, yeah, okay. All right. Okay. And so. it's, 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 it's about life and what, where you should place your values and how a father replicates, how the son replicates the life of the father and how they go through the same pitfalls. It's, it's, Beautiful. it's, it's, sounds good. Please watch it and text me. I will. But Let's, can I, can I put something on the record here? I think Steven's going to love the Fountainhead. And I think Steven, you are going to not be able to put it down, whether it's audio or reading. I think you're going to really think, think the book is so, it's Tim, such Tim, what do you think? Tim, you Tim know, no I think, Tim, what do you think? I agree. I agree with her because I wow. think, you know, I, if you will just put again, do the audio book. The guy that reads it is awesome. I listened to it, I think twice on audiobook back before the back before the Joe Rogan podcast. I was actually mowing lawn or driving. I I listened to it I think two or three times on audio. I think if you give it a chance, I agree with Kim, especially I've the got audio. It. So I've got it. Eh? I've got it. I, I've actually bought it and not listened to it. So so I will I will try. But I, I tried to do the other Iron Ron book. And uh, yeah, Alice shrugged, and I was reading it, and I was like, "Yeah, he's describing the weather outside, and yeah, there's something about a railway train." It and takes, I'm like, "This it takes this a little longer shit. to get into Alice shrugged, and but Alice yeah, shrugged is, is another one too. But it but it takes a little longer to get into it. Fountainhead, I think, I think it's just a quicker dive in. But even, yeah, even though they're both, you know, well, I think I think Atlas shrugged is a thousand pages. I think you know again, and I love Atlas shrugged, but. I think, you know, as we joked earlier, ah, uh, you know, I think that could have been a 700 page book and, yeah. and, you know, and, and not, I know there's, you know, not to, I don't want any Ayn Rand fans to like send me hate <laughs> mail, but, but I, and I love it. I freaking love Atlas Shrugged. She's, Shrug. verbose. She's a little verbose in Atlas Shrugged. And yes. even John Galt's speech is like, you know, what, a hundred pages. I mean, she, she's like putting her philosophy forward in that book. I thought which, more, like, get a philosophy book, tell us our story. Yeah, which, which, which my, and this will be a, the, my favorite is the, is the Francisco de Ancona speech that's the best one but anyway not, not not to get too far into the weeds with ayn rand so um hey, before, before we go tim would yep. you guys be willing to say that i have a podcast yes yes actually let, let's do that one thing i do before i forget yeah on that note we I, we, we kind of jumped around on it if you're listening on itunes check out those past episodes with kim and steven we talked about they're in your archive also, if you're listening, remember, you can go to steadytrade.com and they'll be linked up below. So now, yeah, go ahead, Kim. Yeah, love it. So I just wanted to say that I ha uh, started the podcast. Uh, we've done six episodes, season one. And I, my t hope is that I'll have a different guest host for every six episodes for oh, one beautiful. season. I talk about my five practices uh, in season one, explaining why I think they're important. Uh, I'm not specifically talking about trading in my podcast, but all five practices you guys have heard me talk about, certainly with Steven and the Twist uh, series we did. So I do think if you want to dive deeper into those five practices, it would be really valuable to your trading. So The Wall Street Coach with Kim Ann Curtin is the podcast. Okay, perfect, perfect. Um, uh, and so, I'm, so I'm, meant to, I'm meant to be a guest as well, but I'm unreliable. But I'm going to try and be one. You're going to be a guest uh, co-host, Stephen. I'm meant to be honest. I'm meant to be honest. You are meant to be honest. So um, it's, I, I take it it's on iTunes, et cetera? It's on iTunes and YouTube. And then if you go, is it, is it linked on your webpage? Or? 
it, it is on my web page. Yes. Okay. Which you is my website. You see the links, uh, the wall street coach.com. The wall street coach.com. Yes. So again, and for, just, the, for the, for the listeners also, Tim is also going to be a guest co-host. So, uh, I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> I, th- I thought I thought I thought I thought I had some specific value and I was the stronger of the two and you needed us on there. Uh, I, you, I uh, need you're asking you a everyone. lot of episodes, Stephen. So. You're asking us everyone. You're asking everyone. <laughs> oh, he, he doesn't feel special now. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> So we will, uh, I hope you, I hope everyone enjoyed listening to this. I'll run it down real quick again. Um, starting out in November, it is the daily trading coach. December is the hour between dog and wolf. January is trading in the zone. February is technical analysis on multiple using multiple time frames. Um, March is the inner voice of trading and April, we end with the big one. We, you know, hopefully, you'll be in the, in the habit of reading and, and you'll be able to tackle Fountainhead by Ayn Rand. So hope you, get, hope you enjoy this. And again, our goal is to review these together. So, so it would be great you know, if you could read them. And then we'll record probably at the end of each month. And we'll kind of obviously grow and learn together. I think it's, I think it's just kind of a, an exciting way. And, and who knows? I mean, just a, an idea. Maybe, maybe we'll even have like a call in where, where we could even wow. have some that of you cool. like call in or something. We have that, you know, we're recording with zoom. It's something we could definitely facilitate. We've done it. We did it way back in season one, a couple times. So um, thanks again, everyone for listening. Okay. And at worst, Get the audio books. Take the take the Stephen Johnson easy way out. At best, get the old hard copy paper ones and 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 read, my friends. Read, groovy baby. Hi, this is Sonia May from Albany, Georgia, and I like to travel the world while listening to Stephen and Tim on the Steady Trade Podcast. You can register to win real actual prizes at their website, steadytrade.com. If you really like what you hear, give the podcast a five-star rating and write a glowing review on iTunes. I did. And this is how we say goodbye in Orlando. Goodbye. Goodbye.